Um, Chief Williams, so, so far we've had four nights of protests. Yes. Now that we've had a curfew issued as of yesterday, 8 p.m., you still had arrests. Oh, yes. You've had time to assess. Mm -hmm. What worked and what would you do differently, if at all? Oh, those are really, really good questions. So, so what worked was having the curfew as a tool to begin the process of asking people to leave, to leave the area, to not engage in criminal activity. What we found three nights prior is that the criminal activity w was happening and we were, we were trying to mitigate it for many, many, many hours. Uh, the governor's order and the curfew gave us the opportunity to begin the dialogue and to really separate those individuals who really wanted to be there to peacefully protest as they went on their way um, and to curtail the, the criminal activity and the damage. We had such extensive damage two nights ago um, to the central corridor of the city of Phoenix, so it really helped us to mitigate that. Uh, what would I do differently? Uh, we, we still really want to keep an eye on the malls and on the looting, so, we, so I'm, I'm very, very concerned about that. I'm so much concerned that we've mobilized the department, which means that I have every employee who is working, willing and able to work, is working, no weekends, no holidays off at the moment, because we really want to be there for the community and for each other. Right. Speaking of the malls, I'm sure by now you have seen what happened at Scotts Hill Fashion Square. Definitely. It was horrific, it to was. say the least. Yes. Seeing that, what was your reaction to that? And have you been talking to other law enforcement agencies Great. around Great. the state? What are you doing Great. to mobilize? And how are you working together? Absolutely, so, so let, let's start with how are we working together? Uh, I have a laundry list of law enforcement agencies that I need to give a big shout out to, a big thanks to. Uh, one of these days when we can all sit down together and eat, let's definitely do that. Um, but MCSO, Maricopa County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Pinzone, Heston Silver, Tolleson PD, Surprise PD, I know I'm going to miss somebody, Larry Hall and Buckeye, thank you, Art Miller in uh, Peoria, thank you, Kent Cost in Mesa, everyone and anyone that we wanted or needed, they stepped in. Um, you talked about talking to the different chiefs in the county. Um, we do. We have a co conference call together uh, usually every day now at 3 o'clock to make sure we're understanding and learning from one another. And at the end of the day, because we're law enforcement, I'm having a bigger conversation with my fellow police chiefs across the country through the Major City Chiefs Association. So we're all learning um, and trying to understand how to best serve. But at the end of the day, to, to those who protest, we want the same thing you want. We want peace, we want justice, we want incidents that happen in Minnesota never, ever, ever, ever to happen again. So we all want the same thing, but the violence, the property damage that just so distracts from the message that we all want to have. Um, and we do want to encourage people to exercise their First Amendment rights, but do it within the confine of the governor's order. Um, governor Ducey constantly listens to law enforcement. He will reach out to us either individually or collectively to ask what do you need, um, what can I do to help. So thank you Governor Ducey and your office and staff for that assistance. As the nights progressed since Thursday with the protests, things progressively got a little bit worse. Absolutely. Yesterday, again, despite the curfew, you still had arrests, you right. still had vandalism. Definitely. Do you need to be even more forceful or do you wish you had been forceful earlier? You know, I, we're always constantly assessing and looking and saying how we can best manage things um, with the appropriate level of force. So when we first started, we were giving orders, we were giving people the chance and opportunity because in all honesty, my officers, myself included, we, we just really wanted to believe that people were just going to listen. And as uh, the, the protests got um, more and more violent through Saturday, the property damage that was in the central corridor of downtown is close to a million dollars worth of damage. That cannot be tolerated, even though we wanted to believe the community. Uh, so we made the collective decision that um, at the end of the day, we were going to begin enforcement. We're going to give people a chance and opportunity to do what they needed to, to, to do peacefully. But at the end of the day, I cannot tolerate, we cannot stand by for the constant damage uh, because I was so afraid and concerned that the city would burn and, and, and I didn't want that to happen. Right. Nor did my officers. Exactly. And we have seen cities burn oh. from the East Coast to the West to the Coast. West Coast. Definitely. It is prevalent in so many of these big cities, even in the smaller cities yes. that you wouldn't expect. Right. I'm sure 
Your officers have seen that too, the violence against the men and women in uniform. Yes. I'm curious, what is going on through their minds? Are they fearful of their own lives when they see these attacks on police officers? So so, so fear is, is a little bit of an interesting word because I'm, I'm sure we're fearful, but it's what you do to channel that fear. You understand and know that you took the oath of office and we signed up to do this. So I, I know in the hearts and minds of my officers, the majority of the officers across the country, we just want folks to be able to do and exercise their rights, but at the end of the day, if you make the conscious and deliberate choice to damage our city, to damage police officers, to damage individuals in the community, we are going to mitigate that um, with the appropriate level of force, but we're going to give you warnings before we do it. Uh, what we learned post-Trump rally is that there could have been people who didn't hear our commands, the commands that we gave. So we've increased the tools that we have for our police department. They have different microphones and speakers in their gas masks. We have long-range acoustic devices in English and in Spanish or other languages that we need. We, we just want folks to be thoughtful. Yeah. There is a real fear among residents, mm -hmm. not just, That's you true. know, the protesters, the rioters, what have you. Yeah. Some people are taking matters into their own hands and arming themselves. Yes. What do you want to say to the people of Phoenix and throughout the Valley who feel scared for their lives and perhaps have to take matters into their own hands? You, you know, that that's uh, People ask me all the time, you know, you're a police chief, what are the things that keep you awake at night? Someone making a rash decision or someone who has bad intentions, wanting to do something bad to someone just because um, are one of those things that, that I'm constantly concerned about. So what I would ask members of the public to do is that if there is activity and if you're concerned, pick up the phone and call 911 or Crime Stop. Police is better equipped to deal with that matter. Um, but at the end of the day, we need to say to those people who are conducting criminal behavior, wanting to damage, damage property, that is not the way to go because an individual has the right to protect himself, herself, and their property. I, I just hope and pray that there is a balance to that. As a woman of color, born and raised in Phoenix, you know this community. This is your community. You can relate in so many ways. Okay. When you see the mass violence erupting across the nation, take a step back. What as a society do we need to do to move forward? We, we, we need to stop the violence and the destruction and have real conversations, real policy changes, real societal changes, and begin that delicate step and mountain climb of continuously and constantly building trust. Uh, holding law enforcement um, accountable and transparent is definitely going to be one of those things, too. Um, so you, you mentioned as a woman of color. So when we saw the um, demonstration yesterday from the ASU students, it, it, it broke my heart and it made me proud at the same time. So the, so the pride came from people wanting to exercise their voice in a productive way, because at the beginning of the day, that's absolutely what it was. But it was young people, kids, or young people, I should say, I call them kids, who were the same age as my two sons, you know, 26 and 27, who, who really want to be those uh, change agents, but do it in a productive way. Mm -hmm. You talk about your two sons. I do. There is a real fear mm -hmm. because of the color of their skin. Absolutely. What do you tell your sons and what do you tell people in your community? That, that's, that's always good. So first and foremost, uh, what we tell folks in the community, what, what we made sure our sons had, uh, current driver's license, registration, and insurance. So driving is not a right, it's a, it, it's a privilege. You have to have current information. At the end of the day, if you are stopped by law enforcement, I want you to be respectful. I want you to, to do what they have. Um, and you just hope and pray for the great outcomes. I do know that by and large, 99% of law enforcement is amazing. Um, that so gets lost when we have scenarios and situations like this um, and really want justice to be had for people. Um, but at the end of the day, if there is someone who does not do what he or she is supposed to do in uniform, we need to hold them accountable and be transparent. Bottom line, your message to the community as we enter possibly another night of protests. Uh, please exercise peacefully. Please abide by the curfew and the order. Um, if you see activity that um, is dangerous, if, if you feel as though you're in jeopardy, please give us a call. Uh, to those individuals who have the intent to commit criminal acts, um, we will be there. Law enforcement will be there. And it's not just the Phoenix Police Department. Valley-wide, county-wide, uh, we are there as a resource to be able to lean on and help one another to mitigate those situations and circumstances with the appropriate level of force. Anything else you want to add? Uh, no, just thank you to you guys for talking to us and for being boots on the ground to see what's happening and to truly capture um, the spirit of everything that's going on. Yeah. 
Well, we thank you for your time thank and you. everybody across the department for I have what they awesome do. Awesome people. Yeah. I have awesome people. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much.